Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a cutaway fragment drawing in Rhino. I'm going to be using this model here to create a technical detail fragment looking at and exposing the layers of construction within this drawing. Now usually if we want to expose our kind of drawing in a section we'd be using a clipping plane in Rhino by typing in clipping plane into the command line, drawing out our clipping plane rectangle there and moving it into the relative position where we want to take our section cut. But for this particular drawing I want to expose the layering of these objects and how they stack up next to each other. A sec traditional section will kind of flatten that section line here as you can see but it's quite hard to see how each of these pieces come together. I can't really expose this kind of steel frame I have in here and some of the elements are hidden within that section. So because of this, we're going to create a cutaway drawing that kind of cuts away some pieces slightly more than others to reveal these layers and expose some of the kind of detailing behind this particular structure. Because of this, a traditional clipping plane won't work for this purpose. So we're going to delete that clipping plane for now. And instead, I'm actually going to kind of take away pieces of the model and actually physically change the geometry here to expose each of these layers. Because of this, whenever we do one of these drawings, it's important to make a copy of the model we're using so we can always go back later to the whole model again. I usually do this just by selecting all the geometry using the copy tool here, making sure I copy it vertically as we're gonna just move it directly below the model. And for this, I'm just gonna move it down by 100 meters so it sits below the model. To do that, we can just type in minus 100 there and it will move it negative 100 meters below the model, like so, and then we can hit enter. Now we've done that, we've got two copies of the model, one sitting directly below the other. The reason I put this below is if I want to kind of bring this model back later on, I can always just move it 100 meters up and it will snap back into the correct position again. So let's zoom in on this model and we're gonna to begin to cut away pieces of this model, exposing certain layers of the geometry as we go through this. Now to do this, I'm not going to use the trim tool by kind of doing a plane and trimming because this will leave me with slightly hollow geometry to work with. As you can see here, if we use the trim tool and cut through these objects like so, and then use the trim command here, what we end up with are these sort of hollow faces of geometry. And this isn't going to look very nice in our final drawing because we're going to be able to see through some of the solid objects here. So instead of using trim, I'm actually going to use the Boolean tool with a large cube here to kind of Boolean difference out some of the pieces so it leaves us with nice clean faces of geometry. Obviously if you use the trim tool you can then cap the geometry but I find using the Boolean tool is slightly easier as we go because it will do this automatically for us. So the way I'm going to do this is just to push my cube into the place I want to intersect. So let's say we can start here just intersecting with this red wall piece there. We're going to then select the geometry that I want to remove and we'll select both these walls at the same time and also the floor. You can also just select these all at once. If you know you just want to cut evenly through these red objects, we could go into the layers, right click on the walls and go select objects there and that will select all the wall objects at once. Because of this particular model, I'm gonna be a bit more careful with this, so we're gonna select them individually so we can have a little bit more control over what we're cutting. Then we're just gonna to go to the Boolean difference tool here, or we'll type in Boolean difference, pick our cube we're subtracting with, make sure our delete input is set to no, and then hit enter there to essentially remove those pieces of the model, like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up the video and we're going to go through this just using the same process to cut away at other parts of the model, cutting back each part of this sort of skin, revealing these certain layers. You can see as I go through this, we're going to be kind of being quite careful of which pieces we're subtracting, which pieces we're not, always sort of going back and checking how it's looking and just deleting any excess pieces I don't need from the edge here. So usually this can take a little bit of time to get right, but it's important that we're quite careful with this process, that we're not kind of removing too much of the model that we don't want to, and we're sort of leaving in pieces and staggering that layer that we're cutting. This will allow us to kind of show and highlight certain parts of the model in relation to others. 
so we can be careful about what we're exposing and also kind of revealing in that way as well. Usually with this process, I want to kind of show parts of the structure as a kind of primary structure and then kind of break this down into secondary structure, etc. So we're really showing the build up of the building, how all of the layers kind of contribute to that build up as well. So we're kind of delicately picking apart each of these pieces to reveal how the building is created there. Now we've completed our cutaway piece, you can see that we're now left with this fragment element here. I've chopped back each of these layers to expose certain pieces of the floor build up here, as you can see, revealing certain kind of infill panels. And we're just kind of keeping them subtracted in certain places so we can expose the frame next to the kind of glazing element. You can always tweak some of these afterwards as well if you want to just show a little bit more of these elements and others if we want to increase that glazing piece coming out like so and exposing some of the structure here. So you can see how I'm kind of revealing each of these layers just by stripping back that cut line slightly and staggering it as I go through the model. Same with the ground here, where I'm cutting out a big chunk to show parts of the foundation elements there as well. So now we've completed this, we can now start to turn this into more of a drawing. To do this, I'm going to do two things. We're going to first add some materials to this object to give it some materiality and some color. And then we're going to create 2D line drawing versions of this, which we're going to combine together to create our final drawing. To create our materials, I'm just going to be using the standard Rhino render for this, but you could be using V-Ray or any other render engine to create this look. Um, I'm going to first check that I'm using Rhino render just in the render settings under current render. And we're going to switch to the rendered view so we can see the materials in there as well. Once we're in that, we're going to go over to the materials tab just over in the properties menu over here. And we're just going to remove any extra materials that we have from before and start to create some new ones. To do this, we're just going to click on the plus tab and we're going to be making physically based materials because I'm using Rhino's kind of built-in render engine and this is the kind of standard material that we can use for this. In there we're just going to make a selection of materials and I'm going to start with a sort of concrete material here for these walls. For my materials in this case I'm not going to give them any sort of image properties we're just going to give them some block colors for now so I'm just going to set the color to a sort of reddish color here let's do a sort of dark kind of matte red like so we're going to play around with the roughness so it's not too shiny and then we're just going to apply it directly to the layers that my objects are on because i've layered my 3d model up via their materials i can just apply the material directly to the layer like so by clicking on the walls and it will apply it on there so i'm just going to now go through and apply each of these materials kind of to the different layers as I go. I'll speed up the video for this because it's very much the same process of creating a material and adding it on to the relevant objects. So we're just sort of going to go through these and add in each of these material pieces in here as we go along. If you want to watch any other videos on material creation I'll put a link in the description of this video on material creation videos for you to explore got a series on sort of material creation in V-Ray as well as in directly in Rhino Render. Um, so you can start to sort of explore how to add these in in places and how to create different materials for different objects. For this particular tutorial, I'm just gonna be creating very simple looking materials for these to give a sense of what these kind of the coloring of these particular materials might be. But you can take this further in your own work to kind of add slightly more detail to these, give them sort of slightly different properties as you go as well, if you want very distinctive looks to the materials you're doing. Now I've completed adding those materials in, you can see we've now got a kind of different color on each of those objects that we can then go back and tweak if we want to tweak any particular properties related to that kind of color tone or adjust those settings in any way. As said, you can always kind of increase the complexity of these materials and add textures in if you want to as well. But for this particular tutorial, we're just going to stick with some block colors for this object. You can see as I've added them by layers, it will also have done it to the larger model 
below and this might mean if you want to kind of compose or compile these two objects together later on to create an image we can do so. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a view for this fragment that we're then going to be kind of turning into our fragmented drawing. To do this I'm actually going to just group up each of these models, this fragment piece and the whole model below. And what I'm going to do is we're going to move the whole model back up vertically up 100 meters into position here. Once I've got that you can see there's a slight overlap and I'm not going to worry too much about that for now but I'm now going to set up the view that I want to take on the whole model instead of just the fragment. The reason for this is if I want to compose the two together it's important I get the whole model actually in the view and then I can zoom in to the fragment within there. So for this particular view, because I want it to be a kind of more technical drawing, we're going to set it to a parallel viewpoint so it's a little bit flatter in that view, like so. And we're just going to get a nice sort of isometric angle that we're working with there. Once you're happy with that and we make sure that the object's nicely framed in that window, to make sure it's sort of central, I'm then going to save that view out as a named view so we can keep that view saved. To do that we're going to go to view, set view, named views and we're just going to save it to ISO view like so. I usually put the named view panel on the side here so I can get back to it later. Now we're going to create two two-dimensional drawings or make 2Ds of this model that we can use later on. To do this I'm just going to for now hide this particular fragment so we can't see it and we're just going to select all of the objects in my view make sure we're on that ISO view and do a make 2D there to create a 2D drawing from that view. For this we we'll make sure we maintain the source layers and we maintain the viewport rectangle as this will allow us to easily line up the views later on. Once we've got that we're going to hit OK and it will just do our make 2D drawing. That will always be projected in your top view, so once you get it we're just going to move it out the way, come back into that ISO view, we're going to show the objects again, so we bring back our fragment and we're going to hide the main piece this time, like so. Making sure we're locked in that view again, we'll do the same thing where we take the fragment, do a make 2D drawing from it, and then in our top view we'll just take these out like so. So there we have our two 2D drawings of our view. Once we've got that we can save those out and I'm going to be adding quick line weights to these in Illustrator so we're just going to go file export these drawings out together make sure we export them as an Adobe Illustrator file and we'll call this line work. So that's the line work version of the file and that's now saved. We're now going to create a kind of rendered version of this. I'm going to start with the fragment view and we're going to go up to our render properties to start to tweak some of these properties before we render it. You can see the model looks okay here but I want to actually get some proper lighting on this particular fragment model. So to do that we're going to go into the render properties. We're going to scroll down to the lighting panel and I'm going to turn off this skylight which is a kind of generic all around light in the model and we're going to turn on the sunlight instead so it's just got the sun. We're also going to just tweak the resolution of this. I want to make sure the render is locked to the viewport aspect ratio that way it will match the 2D drawings I've done as well and we're just going to up this to 2000 pixels and up to good quality as well. If you want it slightly higher quality you can put it on final but it will take slightly longer to render and for this particular demonstration we're just going to go for good. Once we've got that we'll hit OK and you can see that the lighting has now changed here. If we want to tweak that lighting I can open up the render tools in this tab here, click on the little sun icon and if we tick this on manual controls I can then start to tweak exactly where that lighting is coming in from if you want certain sort of shadows on the building or you want the light sort of higher or lower in the sky. I think we'll go for something like this and once you're happy with the lighting it's always good that you go to the render preview to preview what this will actually look like when it's rendered because this will be quite different to the rendered viewport view which is just a kind of very quick preview of it. So let's hit the render preview button and give us a render preview of this and you can see now the lighting's a lot nicer 
we're getting kind of nice materials in there as well. It's still a bit grainy, but that's just because I'm on the sort of preview mode of this. I'm also going to up the resolution of this because my fragment is quite small within this larger page. So we're just going to up that resolution so we can see it in a bit more clarity. So to do that, we're going to go back to the render properties and up that resolution up to, let's say, a 4000 here. So it's a lot higher res there. This will take longer to render out, but that's fine for this particular model. Before we render this fragment out, I want to make sure that when I render this, we actually keep the background as transparent, and this will allow us to easily overlay it onto other objects in our drawing. To do this, we can go to Render, Render Properties, and under the backdrop, we can click on this Transparent Background option. Once that's ticked, when we start our render by clicking Render here, You'll notice that it has now removed that white background from the image, which means we can save it with this transparent background applied. And this would be really useful when overlaying it onto other parts of our image to collate and collage our kind of 2D drawing and our render piece together. As you'll see, this is now kind of ticking up in the left hand corner here up to a value of 500. And this value is set by the quality we've set the render to. So setting it to good sets it to 500 samples here. And the more the number of samples, the longer it will take to render out. You can see as the sample goes up, we'll actually reduce this noisiness of the image. So those kind of little specks and noise will kind of smooth out as we up that sample rate. So you want to let that go as high as you can to get a smoother quality render. But obviously take, that takes a kind of longer period of time. So it's always about balancing time with the kind of quality output you're looking for. We're going to let this render out and then we're going to render out the larger fragment as well, which we're going to use to kind of compose and compile our image together. Now this rendered fragment is complete, we can save the file out just by clicking on this save icon here and saving this out as a PNG file to make sure we capture this transparent background there. Now we've saved that, I'm also going to render the larger fragment of the model just by making sure we kind of show the piece we hid before and then selecting that smaller fragment and hiding it again. And then we're just going to do the same thing and render out this larger fragment too. Once we have both of these pieces rendered out, we can then start to kind of pull the drawing together using a mixture of Illustrator and Photoshop to set up the line work and also compose the rendered image over that piece of line work too. Now this larger render is complete, we can save it out. And we're going to kind of compile these two images together along with the line work drawing. To do this, we're just going to locate our saved files here. And I'm going to open up the line weight drawing first, that we can start to edit these and add some kind of line weights to them. When they come in, they'll probably be quite small from your Make 2D, so you usually just increase the size like so. You'll see that the layers are maintained because we maintained the source layers when we did the Make 2D. And I'm just going to edit the artboards first to match with the frames of these drawings here. So we're going to go to Document Setup, Edit Artboards, and then locking all the layers so we don't accidentally move any lines. I'm just going to make sure the lines of the artboard match up with the outline of the image here. So we'll do the first one like so. and align it like this. And then we're just going to copy that by holding the Alt key on our keyboard and dragging it down to the one below. And just aligning it to the corners of this artboard piece here, like so. And there we have our kind of two artboards there. Once we've got that, we can add some line weights to our lines. We can hide the viewport rectangles, we don't need that anymore, but I'm just going to go through these particular objects and add line weights to them. To do this, I'm just going to select the layer, click on this small round icon next to it to select all the objects in that layer, and then we can change the stroke color to a black in this case, and we can change the weight of that down to a sort of nice weight of lines. You might want to delete any excess lines as you go, like so, just to tidy up the drawing. And I'm just going to quickly go through this, selecting the lines and changing their line weights to something 
that kind of looks nice within this particular drawing that I'm setting up. So I'm going to fast forward this part of the video just to quickly set up each of these line weights here so then we have some nice line weights to work with in our drawing. Once you're happy with the line weights we've set up, we can now save this out as our kind of line work file. I think for this larger version, as I wanted to show it quite transparent behind the fragment I've detailed, I'm actually just going to select the lines on this particular piece and I'm going to add a dashed line to them. And we're going to just do a three point dash to this. You might want to kind of tweak some of these particular line weights, but for this one, I'm just going to keep it like this for now. So it's more of a dashed line and this one is more of a solid line. Once we've got that, we're just going to go to export, export as, make sure we use the artboards here and we'll just call it line work kind of weighted and export that out as a JPEG image, making sure we're on the maximum quality there. So now we've got all of these elements, we can start to compose them together in Photoshop. What we can do is we're going to start with this line work version and we're going to start with the sort of overall image of the line work and we're just going to click and drag that into our Photoshop file to open this up like so. We're going to take the second version which is the fragment and we're going to drop that on top and as you can see because they're made from the same frame they'll nicely line up over the top of one another. We're then going to take our rendered fragment here, drop that on top too and find our rendered building and drop that on top as well. So we've got all four of these fragments. You'll notice that they all line up nicely because I made sure I kept that aspect ratio the same in every view and this is quite critical to make sure all your pieces line up when you piece them together like this. Now for this we're going to start by just setting up the background piece. To do this we're going to take our kind of base dotted layer. I'm going to put it on a multiply blending mode so it sits over the top of our kind of building element here. We're going to move our fragments to the top here, so this will be in a new folder, and we'll call this base. Under this, I'm actually going to put just a white fill layer, just to add a sort of backdrop to the image. And this will allow me to essentially take my kind of building render and just drop that fill color, so it's kind of nicely faded and transparent there. And I just really want it just to have a little bit of the color of the image there because we want to show the sort of outline of the building sort of transparent and then we're going to highlight the fragment that we're showing. I'm then going to just reduce that dotted line weight down and we'll just do it at a 50% opacity. So we've got a nice kind of faded view of the piece here. Then we can drop our technical fragment over the top like so. And you can see now it's kind of isolated out of that piece. And we can do the same by putting the line work over the top. I'm going to then put that on a multiply layer to just have that sat over the top of my image here as well. So you can see that this has got its own line work on it. We can always kind of go back and edit that in our Illustrator file if we want to as well to add any more pieces to that too. Once you've compiled all of these together, we can then crop the image because we don't need to line up anything anymore. And I'm just going to crop it to make sure that fragment is the sort of center part of this particular image. 
let's make this a kind of square one to one ratio for this particular piece and have it nicely centered on the fragment that we want to focus on like so from here we can then add any edits we want to as well to this particular piece it might be that you want to give a nice kind of thick outline to your fragment too and we can actually do this directly in Photoshop the easiest way is because we've got our kind of technical fragment as a transparent background here if you hold down the control key on that piece and select it with the left click of your mouse you'll select the kind of outline of that object we can then make a new layer I'm going to fill this layer in just a white fill like so and then if we go down with that layer selected I'm going to call this outline like so we can go down to the effects panel here and we can add a stroke to this piece we can change the color of that stroke and I'm going to give it a black outline I'm going to make sure this positions on the outside of this object and then we're just going to play around with that size to give it a slightly thicker line weight there and you can go back and tweak this if we want to once we've got that we can put that on a multiply blending mode and that will give a nice thick line weight to the outside of that object you can always go back and tweak that if you want it to be thicker or thinner or you want it to be a different color as well just to make that piece sort of pop out slightly from its backdrop so that was just a quick video tutorial on how to create a technical fragment drawing like so. We've looked at how to split apart and cut away at certain parts of our model to reveal the layers that are added to it. And if you wanted to take this drawing further, you could add in materiality, labels and kind of annotations onto this as well to increase the clarity of that drawing. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on texturing, rendering and creating drawings in Rhino and V-Ray, please check out the videos on the channel.